Hello, Insanis, and welcome to the new episode of Meanspiration. Means, meanspiration. Means, meanspiration. Of Meanspiration. I'm your host, Annie Letterman, the queen of receiving pictures of your peen. In this episode, we're going to be talking to Josh Wolf. Um, I wanted to come on and just let you guys know I've been gone for a little bit and I am now back. I've returned. I had some construction going on in the house. My dog's, all the hair on his face fell out at once and he turned into a chicken boy. Rob Schneider told me not to give this dog vaccines because it would change his DNA. And he's now part chicken. Um, but I'm excited. I did a Zoom with Josh and I just wanted to let you guys know that um, I'm back. I had a couple health things. I didn't get COVID, but I do have a stomach ulcer, which I do recommend getting. I've lost 10 pounds already. It's the new tapeworm. Um, and Randy's hair is growing back already. So he will be a dog again soon. And um, life is good. So uh, enjoy the show and uh, stick around. I have some fuzzy jackets here. No, you do. That's why I wore mine. I got some jackets for you. Well, oh, yeah. I got my, you saw my new Eagles jacket? Like it? It's like pretty it. sick. Like Even though they suck, but whatever. I don't care. I'm just more supporting my city and my brothers. And Tommy Pope. And Tommy Pope. Oh, my God. For the listeners out there. Yes, we've started. Uh, wow. Tommy Pope is a hilarious Philadelphia comedian. You know, Tommy Pope, Annie, to me, is one of the funniest humans. Yeah, I've, he is hilarious. I, I did Montreal with him. Ooh, I like I mean, Yes, he also referred out. Now, look, if only his stand-up could catch up to how funny he is in real life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I haven't seen him do stand-up since we are in Montreal, and we all bombed, so I can't say yeah. much about him. Or- I will say, no, no, the thing about Tommy is that Tommy just – Focused more on videos. Yeah. He, he jumped out of stand-up a little bit. He could be super funny. without. Also, him. he has the joy and happiness of living in the city he wants to live in. I, I made myself like a cup of water and I put it on the ground and my dog's just drinking the shit out of it right now. I wanted to ask you, okay, so I'm going to do the intro, like, I'm going to do like a beforehand intro. Oh, by the way, look at my shirt. I saw that. I like um, Mets Syndicate gives me all my shirts. They're so good. I'm like, please send me shirts to wear my podcast. I like to wear my friend's merch or Mets Syndicate shirts because they're always funny. That Nickelback shirt is fantastic. How do well, we he's, the one that, he's the one that did the shirt that I have that says Karen in corn font. Yeah. And he also made, I have one that says the McRib is back, and it's, but it's um, Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> and then... Um, what other ones do I have of his? They're, they're just all so good. Oh, the Shrimp 666. I have to tell you, you're, I've always enjoyed your style. Well, like when you, po- you posted something on stage uh, uh, the other day where you were wearing, um, you know, that cheetah jacket you have on stage. Yeah. And I love that because Los Angeles is the only place where you can look at somebody and be like, are they super poor or super rich? Yeah, no, it's 100%. And you have no clue. And you can't tell by their car. You can't tell. There's no, honestly, the only way to tell is the weight of their credit card. Yeah, those, those, the metal ones. Yeah, if you don't have a metal credit card, you should not have that car, sir. Listen, LA is the only place where you can go to the fanciest restaurant in the world. And, and I'm there. <laughs> yeah. Me and you, I'm in my hat and t-shirt and like, yeah. Listen, oh, well, I was thinking about that one time. I love, do you know that restaurant Matza? That's on um, Highland and... On Mel- and Melrose, yeah, yeah, yeah. Moza or something, I don't know. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I went there on Mushrooms with my ex-boyfriend, and we were dressed like... We looked like animals. I mean, we had just gotten a check. Like, one of us had gotten, like, a residual or something. So we're like, ooh, fancy dinner. So then we're like, let's take Mushrooms over in, which was the worst mistake ever, to be the poorest people in a restaurant. But we ended up looking the richest, because we were like, you know, there's something about socks and slides at a fancy restaurant that screams like, I'm a billionaire. Oh, because, yeah, people are like, they don't care that much? Yeah, like, 100%. Yeah, I agree with you. I, yeah. I don't agree. There's something, though, also, there's a freedom, like when you get that check, right? And you know you don't have any money, 
and you know you're just going to spend that check, you, you're like, do you want an extra plate of, of mac and cheese? We're not going to eat it. Fuck it. Order it. You know what I mean? And you just, yes. there's a freedom to that where you're like, this is $300 or whatever it is that I'm not saving. I'm spending it all right. I spend a lot of money on crab legs, if I'm being real. Do you really? Well, I love a good crab leg. I love just a bag of crabs. Do you, do you go out to a bag of crabs? Do you go out to a restaurant to get it or do you buy them and cook? You get it. You will. Back in the day, I would go to like Hot and Juicy and it's New Orleans style and they give you just bags. It's just bags of whatever you order. My dogs, by the way, couldn't be in a more annoying mood. It's, I've not hated them until this day. I've loved every second of them and I'm looking at them today going, I'm going to throw you back over the wall. You're going back to Mexico. <laughs> You're going to remange them? Yeah. Oh, I haven't even announced that to the people yet. People, I just disappeared for like almost a month. I was so depressed. My dog got, you guys, my dog got mange. By the way, Todd, I cannot tell if this is the right thing because it's just us separate. But the other one like lights up when each of us are talking. Like the side by side view. Like this one lights up when we're talking, when the different, or maybe it doesn't. Is this the view? Look to see what's in my closet. I know. I love it. It looks like it could be my closet. Okay. So you're all moved in, I see. Yeah. Like this is where the merch is and where I keep my weird shit and like my mushrooms are in there and my weed. It's a mushroom closet. <laughs> my mushroom closet. Not, not. There comes a time in every man's life where he has to get his own mushroom closet. They used to have the man cave and now it's the mushroom closet. I feel like mushrooms have gotten so popular. I was just talking to one of my friends who's um, sober, you know, and I was like, oh, how's your sobriety? And He's like, oh, it's great. I started microdosing mushrooms. And I'm like, oh, we're not even counting it anymore. <laughs> we're not even fucking counting it. Fuck it, dude. We're in the fucking apocalypse. It's so anyway, so I kind of talked to you about this on High Live, but my viewers have not heard this yet. I had a fucking, like a magnet to the most negative, crazy shit for like a month. Everything went crazy. So my, they started doing construction on my apartment all day, every day. We have Sundays off and Saturdays they don't do it. Some, some Saturdays they don't do it. But it's every fucking day. It starts at 7.30. It goes till four. It's so on every surrounding apartment. They're doing demolition. Things are getting knocked off my walls. It's literally like, it's absolute hell. It's, there's all these like fucking, um, they're Mexican, Mexican workers going by, no masks, nobody, people are coughing, nobody's doing, sh it's literally the craziest thing, it's absolute hell, um, yeah, they cut our internet, we didn't have internet for two days, they, did they that was going to happen, or did they just, do no, it? they just accidentally cut it, they just have no regard for the fact that we live here, so because we're in all these surrounding things, they're just cutting pipes and doing stuff, like, we just won't have hot water for days, it's just like, they're not, Annie, they're not working on your place. No, yeah. they're working on all the apartments around me. Oh. And they're just causing hell. Like, it's just, it's just, the, I keep, I'm getting up so early because I'm like, they're not going to fucking steal my morning. Like, I'm not waking up to them. No. I'm like, I'm going to set my day better than this. So that's been happening. I'm like getting in these fights with them because it's just unbelievable at this point. It just makes no sense. Like, why am I paying my rent? And then oh, the building was supposed to... The building was supposed to, it, it got, the building was purchased by another company, some like big rich company that buys a bunch of buildings. So then they came in, this was before COVID. So they came in and they thought they were going to have this sweet thing where they were going to buy us all out. And then they were going to knock the whole thing down and, and do it. And then nobody took the, they offered a bunch of deals to people. I wasn't home the day they were offering deals. So they <laughs> skipped my door. Okay. So oh, I just... Oh, I'm so mad. So then, so everyone's like, yeah, they offered me like 60,000. They offered me 70,000. People are like, they offered me 30, but I'm not going to take it. And I'm like, wait, yeah, I wouldn't take 30 either. Wait, they were offering people $30,000 to leave there. That was the low. They were offering people like 70,000, but everyone wanted like a hundred. All these people in this building, it's like a Melrose place, like style. And also dramatically too, there's like exes that live in the building and new married couples and like everyone's lived here. They all went to college together. Everyone's like friends that lives here. So there's like maybe six families left and people left that live here and they all know each other. And then it's me and Eleanor. Kerrigan lives here. Wait, Eleanor lives there? Mm -hmm. Eleanor lives here, but she's been back in Philly and like running around and stuff. Um, and so, but all of the other apartments are not surrounded by the apartments that are empty. We are the only ones that are, so they hear construction like on the other side of the building. 
Uh, they have like no clue and they're all mad because their parking spots got taken away by construction i'm like and you're worried about your parking spot but anyway so i call the guy so i go i go out while they're doing all the construction they've cut our internet i'm like so now there's two days i can't work like i do this todd edits so it's like we need our internet right and um so i had to like cancel my podcast for that day and then um we're like in this fight with them and I go, it's, I think it's fucked up because I'm the only one they didn't offer a buyout to. And then all of a sudden, like magic, I get a call from this 3110 number. And it's this guy who's like, hey, I'm Michael. I'm dealing with the buyouts. I heard you wanted a buyout. I must have missed you the day I was like going by. And I go, okay. I'm, he's like, how much do you want? I go, 60. And he's like, oh, you know, that's too high. He gets me down to 37,000. And I'm like, that'll be enough for me to, I was going to put all my stuff in storage, go back East, quarantine in an Airbnb, have Thanksgiving with my family. This was the beginning of the month. I was like, so it was stressful, but I was so happy. I was like, this is perfect. I'll see my parents finally. That's been just like a mystery I have to solve. Like, I don't know how to like crack the code of how to see my parents. Yeah. But so that would do it. And then put all my stuff in storage. And then I have enough money to put a couple months down and overlook my credit and get like a place by the beach or something. So I was like, this is great. So the guy goes, all right, I'll wire you $15,000 in a second here. And I go, great. I'm about to give him my info. Then he calls back. He goes, you know what? We're not doing deals anymore. We decided not to. This is an entire day of negotiating that we'd had. I'm like, what? I don't understand. Why wouldn't everyone take the deal? Because it was before COVID and everything. They've all lived here forever. Their rent is like $800 for, you know what I mean? And they're not like the money they were offering, if it does end up getting taxed, which I'm under the impression that if you get it, if it's given to you in a certain way, you don't get taxed on it. But so they were all worried they were going to get taxed. And then they were worried that on top of that, like it just wouldn't, not, they're never going to find anything. It's not like three times their rent. Right. And so it yeah, just didn't make sense. And they all are friends. They all like have lived here for years. So they just don't want to move. But there's like kids like in school and they're just like jackhammering. It's like they have no, it's, it's ridiculous. So anyway, so we thought we were going to go home. I was all excited. I told my dad, told my nieces. And then they just took it away. So then I sunk into a depression. I shouldn't have let it get me, but I was so sad. And then right when that was happening, my dog got maimed. So he started scratching his eyes. And he started to bleed and he would get these scabs. And I was like, oh my God. And I was so worried about him and took him to the vet. The vet put him on stuff. But then all of the hair started falling out. So now he's bald. I'll show you him in a second. I saw him on Monday. I know my people haven't seen him yet. I've been keeping him a secret, but I've been so cute. I think you should keep him like that. Shave around the eyes. He's chicken cute. He does look like a chicken boy now. And I was thinking about it. I was getting all this shit because I got him from, I will, by the way, like have you talk at some point. I realized that I've just completely hijacked. I've just been, this was like the intro oh, I was going to do. I literally cool. was like, I made a plan. Where I was like, all right, I'm going to do an intro before that. Like, we'll do this. Then I'll do an intro and I'll get all this like shit talk out about what, what's, what I've been up to. And then we'll just be like me and Josh. And then I just cannot, I have no control of my mouth, <laughs> which was very good for boys when I was drunk. But now <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> it's not good as a host. But anyway, the dog's hair fell out. He looks crazy. I thought he was like, I was just very worried about him. He was very uncomfortable, itching all the time. But now he's better. He just looks crazy. And um, I think he's cuter, just to be honest. He does look pretty cute. And now nobody thinks he's, everyone thinks he's a rescue now, so I'm not in trouble anymore. Wait, because he has mange, people think he's a rescue? Yeah, he looks like a rescue. Nobody thinks that this is a fucking, nobody thinks I spent 800 bucks on this dog and got him from a Mexican puppy mill. <laughs> you spent $800 on a dog? Yeah, he's so cute. Let me ask you a question. Because I know you're super close with your folks. Um, how, how, like, how has that been? How has this been? Because I know, like, I love watching videos. Like, the videos of your mom and dad to me, I loved watching that. I know, they're so funny. They're so funny. But how has that, like, how has that been for you? Like, inc- like is this the longest you've ever been? With it's that 100% scene? the longest. I, my dad got, had to have open heart surgery. Like, very, he had the he had to get like uh, all this stuff done and it was very fast. It was like within three days we found out he needed to do all this stuff and it was a really serious thing and he had a risk of stroke and all this stuff. And that was in 2011 in February, 11, February 11, 2011. And I was living in New York and like went back and it was like, I had to like say, go, I thought I, we might not ever see him again. It was just very like crazy. And my family, we had still, I had still been dealing with a little bit of my teen angst, which maybe I still am dealing with, yeah. but you know, we were like, it wasn't, we weren't solid. And 
But after that happened and he was okay, we've since then, we've seen each other every two months. Like I've just made sure we see each other every, at least every two months, maybe three months. Was him, uh, him getting sick? Did you guys get closer after he got sick? Yeah, we were, I mean, we were always close, but I was still kind of like being a brat about a lot of things. Not that I'm not now, but mm -hmm. I just was very like, I was still really pissed at them. And um, about what? what were you pissed at them about? Just like, like trouble they let me get in when I was a kid. Situations you, they put me in that are so crazy. <laughs> did you, do you feel like they weren't strict enough for you? Oh, yeah. No, I always say that when McDonald's got, when their breakfast was all day, I was so like disappointed. It was like such a bittersweet moment because that cutoff of McDonald's breakfast was the only boundary I had in my childhood. <laughs> <laughs> there was, that was the only time I said no. And so, I, you know, I, I talked to Bonnie McFarlane like almost every day and her daughter's 13 now. And so she's really been Ooh. giving her maybe 12, Bonnie McFarlane. Uh -huh. And her daughter, Rain, is like a preteen or a teen now. And so talking to her and kind of hearing her interact with her daughter and stuff, I can feel my mom's side a lot more now. I kind of get it. And she was, she did mean, she wanted me to be cool. She wanted me to have fun. She didn't want me to be upset. I it will wasn't. tell you, after I had kids, I made a phone call to my parents. And I was like, I'm really sorry that I was mad at you for things that I shouldn't have been mad at you about. Yeah. I understand now. I thought you were saying, like, you called them and you were like, I have my own family now. <laughs> Fuck you. You suck. <laughs> Can you imagine? But I just like I just really lived I had so much traumatic stuff happen in high school I was like I lived in that experience all the time I was always like thinking about it and it's just kind of the way PTSD works but I just worked on it and I you know I I did Ryan Sickler's podcast Honeydew a couple weeks yeah. ago and I told he wanted to hear my like traumatic high school like molestation story again and I told the whole thing and I you know, I have punchlines in it. I like, you know, and I've told it a million times and, you know, obviously like I turned out good and I'm happy and, you know, but I, it triggered me. Honestly, it was like that happened right when the construction happened. I got so like, I just don't want to tell this story again. I've already, I told it on merit. Like I've buried this story. Like I've so many you know times. Why? Can I tell you something? I felt very similar because, all right, so for a long time, all anybody wanted to hear about was my story about being a single dad. That's yeah. That's all I wanted to hear about. Even when I'm with Beth, that's all they wanted yeah. to hear about. And I felt bad because I understand that it's an interesting story and people want to hear about it. But, like, I don't want to be defined as that. Yeah. I would like to move past that. In right. My life, and I completely understand where you're at. Like, you want to move. That's not who... That's not the story you want to tell it's about just, you. We are these like blank bodies in space, right? We have these organs that are working and we've developed these personalities throughout our lives, but we could just decide tomorrow to wake up and just change if we wanted to. Like we really, do, we're, our egos, I, I just like, I just was thinking about every time I tell it, I'm there in the room again, having the thing happen again. And I'm, it's bringing up all these things. I'm getting mad, you know, and everyone always goes, where were your parents? What did, why didn't your parents, you know, and then I go, where were my parents? You know, and I'm like, then I'm so mad again. And it's like, that's just in the, that doesn't fucking exist anymore. And it's, I'm very glad that I've like overcome this stuff. And obviously it's like in my body still, if we were watching um, the Hills have eyes and there were some like really hardcore rape scenes and I, had like PTSD twitches for like two days afterwards. And I've, I'm never a person that's like a pussy about what happens in a movie, but it was like, if the acting's good in a rape scene. Do you scene, ever yeah. look back on those things? Sometimes I look back on things that happened that were terrible, but I'm, when I remember them, I almost have a bird's eye view of them. Like I wasn't, like I'm watching yep. them, somebody else. Yes. You know what I'm talking 100%, about? 100%, yeah. Like you're disassociated from it. You're someone telling that story. And I think- for years, that's how I told this story. And I would do it as jokes. Like, I would always be like, I remember in high school, like after it happened, like in those years, the, I graduated when I was 16. And then so those like, until I was 20, like I would always make jokes. Like people would be like, say something. I'd be like, oh, my teacher jerked off of me. <laughs> See ya, you know, and like, I just leave them with it. You know, like I'd be like, ah, you know, and, that, and just be so cartoonish about it. And you know, like, oh, did your teacher jerk off on you? See ya, like, did you get fucking, Paca um, did you get, um, Jackson Pollock in your back leg by your teacher. You know, just like, 
<laughs> and and I still like I you know I've talked about it on the stage I have no and I'm uh, you know on the Marin podcast I was very like raw because I had just realized like I had just started being in the story where I had been telling it like it was someone else's story and then kind of thinking everyone had the same crazy story I had growing up and just like isn't that crazy we all got molested like by our teachers and yeah our parents and our parents did this and that and everyone would be like oh we like got straight A's like we weren't like My dad drove cigarettes and yeah. yeah I was yeah. like oh yeah. You know, and then I started to realize, like, oh, I was a little different. And not that it's bad, it was, you know, but it was, it just knocked me out of, it, and it just made me feel it more, which I think was good for healing, but it's just, it just tore me open to tell it again. I really was, like, thinking about my parents, you know, I'm getting more successful, and every time my parents, like, send someone to see me saying something, I'm talking shit on them. Yeah. You know, every, like, the even on uh, the Comedy Store documentary, part of my storyline was about my childhood, you know? And so it's like, they, they want to be like, my daughter's with Jay Leno on this thing. And then it's like, you know, I'm like, and my parents didn't watch me, you know? Yeah. And it's just like, not that, not that like, I need to like tamper my life to make them feel better. But I do feel at this point, it's like, they're old. They're in the evening of life. I love them. I'm going to miss them every second of every minute when they're gone. So it's like, but I would you, rather just be good with them. You also have, you're a really funny person. You have so much more to talk about. I you, know. It's like, I don't you, why are you fucking talking about. You literally have opinions on everything. <laughs> so this is not, you know what I mean? Like yeah. you don't need to do that. It, it, I, I, for me, like the first couple of times I told stories like that, it was super cathartic. Right. When I'm with you. I started to get mad. One, I started yeah. to get mad. Like I want to move past this. Right. Thing fucking life well also if you think about it i was like after i did the marin and it was important i made him hold it i was i freaked out after i did that podcast did you really oh my god i got so scared that because it was it was like such a large it was my first like i hadn't done rogan yet or anything so it was my first like large scale appearance on a podcast what's sorry like? i did do control chaos by the way what's what's that like to be on a big podcast what's that like tell me Oh, it's so good. You know, Rogan, I've done it twice and now I'm rich and it's amazing. I'm now a billionaire. You know, uh, Elon Musk is a, uh, just passed Bill Gates in money. Who did? Uh, Elon Musk is now richer than Bill Gates. And you want to know what the difference between the two of them is? One of Elon them Musk has done Joe Rogan's podcast. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just an interesting, and, and it's been really good to understand this and realize that telling this stuff does give me that anxiety and, and some of it's okay because, and Ryan called me and he was like, cause I told him, I was like, look, man, I'm like not really like doing well after that. I don't really want it released. Cause I was seeing clips of another person that had done the podcast. And I was like, after I did Marin, I felt the same way where I'm like, Oh, people are just going to be like running on the treadmill, like listening to my rapes. They're like, <laughs> you know what I mean? And there's, there does come a point where it's when you think of like how often people are watching, um, you know, true crime and stuff. And I have a friend of mine, sister got murdered and I was watching true. I was watching like Dateline or something. And I realized it was her sister. No. And I stopped watching them after that. Cause I was like, what? Yeah. yeah I, I went, Oh my God. Cause she wasn't on it. I don't, she got murdered. Like it maybe has been like 10 years, maybe longer, but the Dateline was like on and I don't, she's a comic. I don't know what's her name, but she um she wrote a post about it and maybe i've said her name before but she wrote a post about it and she was like i just it was right when the um the other murder thing just came out about um ted bundy the bundy tapes and everyone was like it's so good and she was like i just want to let you know like a perspective of like a family member of a victim it tears us up again it like it makes it brings it all back it's not it doesn't feel like bringing awareness and that's the point i came to with my story too where it's like because Ryan was like, this is a really important story to tell. And I was like, 100%. And they can go listen to it on Marin. Because I don't, I just, and yeah. I'm open. Like, if people want to talk about it, I'll talk about it. But it's just like, I get people DM me about their rapes afterwards. Like, I get flooded. And it's like, it, then there's like this responsibility. You know, it's just. That's a tough responsibility mm -hmm. on your shoulders. For sure. Yeah, it's just a lot and it's fine and it's all good and I will take them as they come. But Ryan was really cool about it and he was like, didn't want me to do anything that, that I wasn't comfortable with. But it's like, what are you going to clip out? You're going to be like, 
And then I wiped the jizz from my leg and I said, I'll never again, you know, like what? Now I got to tell you, I did have a friend who had sex with a student, with a uh, teacher. Yeah. And was into it. At 16. But it was like consent. It was. Yeah. But they should never have been like in a sexual position with that person should never, the grown up should never have been. Listen, dude, no argument at all. No, no, no. I know. But I go through these things too. where I'm like, and then I'm like, because I had to judge myself on my thing too, where I had to be like, was this my fault? Did I like leave this guy? This guy had sex with our Spanish teacher. Um, Oh, it's a male to female. Yeah. I used to drive him to her house because he didn't have a car. Were you jealous? No, I got, I got free food and straight A's in Spanish. (laughs) Oh my God. That's so funny. You're like, and I don't speak a lick. (laughs) Annie, the next year, I go put in advanced Spanish because they're like, this dude's smart. Oh, my God. That's so funny. I didn't know anything. That is too good. um, He used to have sex with our Spanish teacher. Um, I mean. It's so sad. Like, it's weird. (laughs) You're going to fuck your kid student. You're in charge of them. That is so nasty. It is not the right thing to do. There's, you should not. Well, they, teachers are just, like, I know there are good teachers, but also my entire high school has been, like, busted at this point. Like, each teacher, like, another one of my teachers got caught with kitty porn. No. Yeah, like, the one that I thought was good. I was like, oh, he was, like, strict with us. He believed in us. It's like, no, we just weren't his type. We're too old for him. His kitty porn was. Hi. Kitty. Uh, but it's just like unbelievable and then I'm like is every teacher a fucking weird pervert and I think a lot of it has to do with a lot of teachers are so young they get right out of college and they go and then the age gap isn't even though it is great and I do believe that's wrong even if you're a 21 year old teacher you should not be fucking your 16 year old student or 18 year old yeah. student or whatever it you're you're as a 21 year old not developed enough to realize that no. that's a kid like you're you know you know, um, you don't like, I would say anybody out of high school should not be dating anyone who's still in high school. Right. You know, my daughter was 18 and a senior in high school and there was this 21 year old dude coming around and both Beth and I were like, I told him straight up, I better not fucking see you at that high school. Dude. Yeah. Or anywhere near my daughter. Yeah. Like, was, just think about it. Isn't it weird to be going to a high school and like, go to it? And he was like, she's 18. I was like, I don't give a shit how old she like, is. Oh, you school. creep. Yeah. When she graduate or, or, or I'm going to punch you. And what happened? Did they wait? Or they I, yeah, her? because I think he, he was, I think. Did he didn't want to see the wolf. I think he knew I was serious when I was like, I'm going to have to punch you in the face. Yeah. Because you can't high school. Like if you're, no. No. Didn't you? I did. We did have like, we had a guy that graduated high school. Um, the year before us and used to come back to all our parties. And, yeah. Oh, and, yeah. But And he was only a year older and it was only a year removed, but it lo- it seemed so... It's like, move forward. You're supposed to be going in that direction. Yeah, it seems so weird. Oh, by the way, I was going to tell you, you know, the last time we got high together... Which not, I forgot to join. Not Monday, but the last when time... When we, we were together, together yeah. And you were like, you should do some... Um, McConaughey. I looked at some of those. I'm definitely going to do that. It, I'm doing a parody. Where I am currently working on a Matthew McConaughey parody, and I would love to talk to you about it. Let's do it. Well, what are you going to do? Are well, you gonna- his, his Lincoln ad where he was like looking off into the thing. And he had the on his chair over. looking off into the... Sun. Yeah. yeah, I got footage of me at the... Olivia Munn came, and we took some footage. <laughs> She's friends with him and me. She's friends with Matthew and me, but whatever. It's no big deal. How much, how much on a scale of one to 10 do you like posting pictures of you and Olivia Munn? I mean, do you know what I like more? Is that <laughs> Olivia loves to post pictures. I'm like, this bitch is a queen. I'm like, she's just like, I'll post it. She's like, do I have permission to post? I was like, you can literally post me looking like absolute trash. I don't care. Do I have permission to post? Yeah. No matter what. Yes, Olivia. And she's so funny because she's, so, she's one of the only left, like, famous people. Le- like, she's a type of famous person that doesn't exist anymore. Do you know what I mean? She's like a tail end of, like, magazine cover. Like, you know, she just had this whole, went from TV to movies and this yeah. whole thing. And um, so, like, paparazzi. So she gets written up 
in every tabloid for any, so I, there's so many articles I'm in where it's like, and comedian Annie Letterman uh, is wearing fishnets in a, you know what I mean? It's just like, they'll just like be an article about what she's wearing. <laughs> and I'm just there and I'm like, this is yeah. great. I'm like, this is so fun. Yeah. I, li- I, like, I, like, yeah. I like those a lot. No, I, I I do enjoy also. I mean, and you know I enjoy your jacket collection. You might have. I've got best. good ones. Yeah, you might have the so best. This jacket one. Can go on. What? We got the, this one. That's my favorite one, I think. Yeah, it's good. It's it's really lasted me a long time. Got the oh. Eagles. I got my black leather jacket. I have a white leather jacket. I have a red leather jacket. I have. I got my, by the way, you ended up being my sunglass inspiration. Like, I, oh, I, I know. Where are the I would look at pictures of your sunglasses and I'd be like, man, I love those. So I'm, I decided a merch I want to make. Hold on. Oh, let's see. I want it to be, I got all these glass, new sunglasses for the show. You know, I got all these colored heart ones. Yeah. But I was thinking the merch could be like a t-shirt, but it looks like heart glasses in the pocket. Great idea. Let me show you. Hold on. Signature. Tell me what you think about these two things. Hold on one second. Hold on. Tell me what you think about. Uh, hold on. Oh, here it is. This one. This. One. Tell me what you think about. So I got one of these. The smoking baby hand. Oh, I love it. I love it. Do you go? You don't. Do you do killer merch or no? Do I do? Oh, do you go through killer merch? I go through Dylan, the upstate, upstate guys. What do you mean this one? I love that one too. I like the baby hand the most. All right, I'm gonna send you one. Um, yeah, yeah, I'll wear it on the show. Are you, uh, are you doing stand up? A little bit, but I honestly got scared because Eleanor got, I keep telling everyone that Eleanor got COVID, she's fine. But Eleanor got COVID, she never, she doesn't have it anymore and she didn't have any symptoms, but she got it and then had been at all these shows and nobody got it from her. But I still was just like, once she got it, I was like, I'm scared to do shows. Like, I don't want to. Did she get tested? She got tested, but she had it. Her mom had gotten it uh, when she was visiting her mom. And then everyone that had been in the family, like hanging out, had gotten it. It's so funny. I kept using Eleanor as an excuse to get out of things. I'd be like, oh, yeah. my, you know, Eleanor's got it. I can't. And then there'd be things I wanted to do and people were like, like Whitney, I was going to Whitney's like Thanksgiving thing. And she's like, did you get tested since the Eleanor thing? And I was like, fuck, I'd like go get a test. Like calling all my friends, everyone I knew. I'm like, does anyone know I can get a test really fast? And so I can go to this fucking party I bought an outfit for. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't she? I thought she had the test at her house. She does usually do that. But this one, people send in their tests. They send in the, I got to tell you, this is like, man, like it's the new STD. I was asking this, uh, there's a, somebody here who's helping Beth edit something. He's a young kid. And I'm like, what's it like, what's it like, say you meet somebody, do you get COVID tests instead of STD tests? Oh my God, you can't go, I don't, can't even imagine. What do you do? Because it's not like you're just gonna, do you and, you, I mean? and you kind of have to like, be careful who you, be, like if you're gonna bang someone, you might have to quarantine with it, like. Oh, Andy, okay. So I have a friend of mine, they, at the beginning of quarantine, they moved into, they moved in with each other two days before quarantine. Started. Uh-huh. And I was like, oh, this relationship is fucking. Yeah. Different. So I go, uh, and her name's Missy and Missy, all I really know about Missy. that he I loved her in the Spade movie. Yeah. She was amazing. She was like, so all, good. Was she the right I, or the wrong one? She was the wrong one. Okay. All I know about her is that she loves donuts, right? So I say to him, I go. Is that code? I know. I go, how's the donut? Missy queen? sounds like a big girl. No, she's not. Wait, wait, wait. Wow, Missy sounds like quite a big girl. I said, uh, how's it going with Missy? How's the donut queen? He goes, well, I learned something about her second day of quarantine. And I said, what's that? And he said, second day of quarantine. Uh, I said to her, uh, you, miss, you miss getting those donuts? Because she used to get donuts every time she slept at his house. Right. And she was like, I have to tell you something. Since we're living together. She said... I don't really like donuts. I just didn't want to shit at your apartment. So I pretended like I had to go. I love donuts. So I would go to the donut shop. Oh my God. <laughs> she was losing weight, not gaining it. Take a shit. I mean, she would shit at a donut shop. Think about this, <laughs> the animal shit we used to do. We would just shit at a donut shop. She's, but she was like, you know, I didn't want to shit at your house. I didn't know you well enough. Oh my God. I to spend the night. It is a dilemma. 
Yeah. <laughs> and worst and- is when you like leave a guy's house and you just like let all your farts out and then they like you forgot something and they like and you have to like roll the window down and like oh my god. Yeah, that's a, that, that's only happened that, once. That's guys too, by the way. Like I when I was dating, I tried not to fart on dates. It's not easy though. I, yeah. my, favorite, my favorite thing to do is to fart in the cushion at the movie theater. Oh, that's it doesn't so smell bad. until you get it up. Oh. But when you get up, it's like it's like like letting all the bats. And in what's the so bad is that's another example of why we should shut down movie theaters for good. Wait, what's um? So you're in Nashville now. You moved in here, and is Nashville open or closed? Um, or both. Both. You know, like Zanies is open, but a hundred people. And what's going on as far as spots? Like, how are the spots divvied up if now there's so many good comics in the neighborhood? Well, you know, they have Monday night. They have um, New Material Monday. Um, And then I do, like, uh, I have a show there one Sunday a month. Um, And then, you know, when people are in town, you can pop in. Like, Brendan was here this weekend. Oh, my God. What if you didn't let me on? What if I was in town and you were like, we're full? (laughs) No, hilarious. Yeah, I'm sorry. New Material Monday. like, uh, okay. But it's great. And you know what? I feel better here than I did in LA. Yeah. I do. I feel more relaxed and happy. Well, I do want to move towards the beach. Like, I'm like, I want to use LA the way it's meant to be used. I think being closer to the beach is more relaxing. So for me, here's the one thing I hated about LA. And I'm not one of these guys who's bashing LA on the way out. I had a great time there. I raised yeah. my kids there. The weather's perfect. I met my yeah. mom there. Like, what am I doing? Yeah. But every day I woke up and instead of being like, oh, it's going to be a great day. It was like, what do I have to do today? I immediately jumped on the wheel and just started fucking running. Yeah. And I don't think that's good for it. I was always comparing myself to other people. Matthew McConaughey. Yeah. (laughs) Man, that fucking guy. (laughs) I will tell you, dude, that dude... The fact that Lincoln pays him money. To say such nonsense? Well, the funniest part about that last voiceover one is he's like, he goes, stop worrying about those pep rallies and football. I'm like, are you talking to high schoolers? Like, who's worrying? Children are worried. He got famous right after high school, obviously, so he can't think of a thing you would have been worried about before it was like, my agent or my my fortune he might as well just be out there being like hey stop worrying about penguins that can't fly you know what Listen, i mean Listen, you wanna yeah he's yeah. um he I have is free toes I mean, you know he's he just is. saying it's i like, do love it though i love everything about him honestly i like that he's all jesusy and all gaudy is he gaudy yeah it's not funny look jesusy Why? oh my god olivia oh. just texted me Oh my God, Todd, you're in this. You're in the Daily Mail. Oh, I'm so pissed you're in it. I'm not. Randy Quaid, look. Olivia Munn wears a tracksuit while picking up friends. You're in the picture and Randy and not me. I'm fucking dumping. You're fired. I don't need to live in insistent anymore. Oh my God, I looked so cute. She's like, I thought there were pictures being taken. Where was Oh my it? god, they followed us to our house. What do you mean? They're, like, there's a picture of her, like, they followed us home. <laughs> to where you are now? Yeah, they followed us to our apartment. <laughs> it's so funny. I'm in none of the pictures. I'm so pissed. Oh my god. Is Todd in the pictures? Yeah. That's I'm texting her, Todd is fully dumped. <laughs> Wow. When we used to walk down the red carpet thing, we'd go to like things with Chelsea and stuff. Yeah. She'd walk down first. Be like, Chelsea, 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 And then the then she'd turn the corner and then the rest of us would and then just everybody would just start looking at there'd be nobody, not one pig. I remember we went to this one thing where it was like 
not one picture. And then Chelsea felt so bad because we were all walking down the carpet. And noticed she came out to take a picture with us. It was humiliating. Chewy was getting, they were like, we'd oh stand my God. and they'd be like, no, 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 just Chewy. I'm like, God. Wait, do you remember the Chewy? Well, you can tell when they're focusing on him. You're like, I'm up here. Yeah, no, they're like, hmm. Yeah. Do you remember that when I, did I tell you this about when I went to give Chewy a kiss on the cheek my first time on Chelsea? Mouth, and he, yeah, he tongue kissed me. Well, you know, you've seen his porns, right? Yes, he's so crazy. But I'm like, I, it was like my first, and everyone's like, oh yeah, you shouldn't do that. I'm like, no warning. Nobody was like, no, yeah. And you're clear of the little man. He's at pussy level <laughs> for a reason. Would, if you were wearing a skirt, like when it was funny when Chelsea would stand next to him, right? She, he would put his hand here. Like when you saw them at the end of the show, his hand was on the inside of her thigh. Oh my God. He was just like, it was so crazy. And what I used to love the most, I'd always like, hey dude, flip me off. And I'd take a picture because his, his middle finger just barely got above all the- <laughs> Oh, I know that meaty sausage link. It was meaty, it was so meaty. It always looked like he only had like four, like four fingers like on yeah, uh, The Simpsons. It always looked like he was like the penguin. Like he had two together and like- Oh, that, he took a, a lot of abuse. Do you know what? Um, he may have sexually assaulted me, but listen, he, he earned it with being treated quite crazy. He drew crazy lines too, because there was this one sketch we did where he was dressed like a baby, right? And he was in a he was in diapers, grown yeah. up. He was in diapers, a bonnet, you know. Um, oh, I remember that book. The one thing, and he had a bottle but he wouldn't suck on a pacifier. He was like, no, I won't do that. And we were like, that's the line you're drawing? Well, have you seen his porns? I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he retired, okay? I remember when we Googled, because we were, we were sincerely interested. How long do little people live? Like, we were just like, yeah. Well, what did he die of, a heart attack? Uh, yeah, he just was, I mean, he wasn't in the best shape. Yeah, he I wasn't healthy. Was, the last time I saw him was at Brody's uh, memorial. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he got a finger in. No. Yeah. <laughs> got one of those digits in. It took me minutes to realize it. I had no clue. I thought I sat on a Vienna sausage. Yeah, they're thick. A little, one of those hot dog parties. They were thick. Yeah, just like that. One of his fingers was like this. Yes. But, but like wrinkly with a lot, like a lot oh, of books. It was thick. Oh. And his breath was like. But he was the sweetest man. Yeah, he was a nice guy. He was he really was, nice. It was so funny. He would always like, he had so many followers to me. Like when, every, when I first started, I had like, you know, probably a thousand followers and he had like 50,000. And I was like, oh my God, you're the most followers of anyone I've ever seen. And I was like, he would like post pictures of me. It was so nice, but he would never tag it right. There'd always be a space or something. And I'd be like, Joey! <laughs> he <laughs> traveled with him in the heyday of Chelsea. Traveling with him through airports, n not joking, was like walking through an airport with Elvis because there was, you couldn't, he couldn't hide. Chelsea he has an Elvis look. Like a hoodie. Yeah. This dude, there's no mistaking that body. Well, in a lot of his life, he could hide more than others, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Under he had a gift of hiding under tables, stools, anywhere. Any of those things. Behind yeah. a fire hydrant, anything. Yeah. But, you know, in the end, he got fa too famous. Um, can you do me a favor? Can you get me my charger for my computers over there? And plug it in and make sure it goes in there. You owe me. You're in a fucking tabloid with Olivia Munn, and I'm not. My dog is on is on in Daily Mail. Your dog is? Yeah. Randy Quaid's fucking famous. Oh, my God. I got to post it. What? Show me. Show me. It's, he's in Todd's lap in the picture. Um, Todd's my live-in assistant. Yeah. Now, you, we got a dog over quarantine, too. Yeah. Named Indiana Jones. He's very big. He's the opposite of my dog. He is, uh, but he's the cutest. By the way, how, how handsome is that guy? Oh, he's such a good-looking guy. Who's that in the back? That's Who's me. that creeper? It's me blurry in the background. No, it's like a creepy guy. Like, yes, I think his son is hot. <laughs> yes. Oh my God, today. Okay, I've been arguing with people about how beautiful California is. When they're, whenever they're complaining, I'm like, yeah, it's terrible, right? Yeah. And you know, I 
hopscotch over a couple bums here and there. But oh boy, love you saying bum, not homeless. Bum at this homeless. point, there's a lot of them. I don't have time to say the word homeless. There's so yeah, many. I, I gotta go bum, 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 bum. Yeah. Homeless. Bum stands for. No, bum to me is East Coast. That's I grew up saying bum too. I get. It. I'm sure I mean they're gonna be like, you can't call them bums anymore. They're called home uh, disadvantage, homeless disadvantaged, home disadvantaged. But okay, so he okay, so I walk my dog to the pet store today to get him a toy, and we're walking, and there is a porta potty that is slightly open. And we're walking by and I hear like a, huh, and I like look over and there's a guy just like taking a shit, but like he stands up and kind of like covers. He's like, oh, like he's so embarrassed. We go, we get the toy. We walk by again. He does the same thing. Like he just has the door ajar so that he can like act like he's been busted. Also, Annie, I don't know when's the last time you were in a porta potty, but I will say this. If you're taking a shit in a porta potty, it's an emergency. It's not, he is, it, it was. And the smell in there, if I had to take He was a sitting. He was sitting. He wasn't hovering. He was sitting. He was yeah. in there for over an hour. Oh, no. Um, and the door was open the whole time. And it's just a residential street. It's not like. Why is there it, a hard potty on the residential Because there's construction everywhere because they're fucking assholes during quarantine. This is crazy. I, I feel like this should be illegal. How can you do this when we're not allowed to leave our houses? I just don't understand. It's kind of crazy. It's insane. It's, I'm literally, I'm going absolutely fucking nuts. They start at 7 a.m.? 7.30. Good Lord. So I try to get up early and um, here, okay. all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show my people, my chicken boy. This is what Randy looks like now. Remember how cute he was? I think he's cuter with the, I think he's cuter. You can't I see like it. it. Show them your bald eyes. Yeah, the eye skin is very, it looks like it's like ball sack material. Someone's like, oh, you have daddy's. Yeah, both. <laughs> I sort of. Back material. In a sense. Yeah. Look, he's feisty. Yeah, I'm really mad at him today. How come? He's being extra feisty. He's no, he, um, I woke up, he, since he got sick, I started letting him sleep in the bed again, which is bad. So I'm going to start creating him again tonight. But he, um, I had him sleeping on me. I fell asleep on the couch and he was sleeping on me. And I woke up at like three in the morning and he just puked on my neck. I was like, oh. <laughs> it's just from eating. He's just like eating, like he ate a toilet paper roll. Oh no. Hey, ow, don't bite me. Ow, where's your toy? We went to the toy store, to the pet store today and I let him pick out a toy and this is what he picked out. Where's the, do you see it here? You let him pick out a toy. What does that mean? Like, I just, you know, I just like saw what he liked, but he, this was on the bottom row and he just pulled it and dragged it to the cash register. Like, look at, I'll look put at the, the video at the end of the podcast, but he just dragged it. This little thing. It's so funny. He's been banging it. Randy's Randy, if you know what I mean. <laughs> does he fuck it? Yeah. Go, Randy, go. That the is- mother assisted banging. <laughs> I know the first day we got him, he immediately started fucking something. And I was like, I think it was my leg. And I was like, I, you know, you just think you have until like they're 12 to deal with this. What's your, Being a what's masturbate. your general rule? If he tries to hump your leg, I know some people are like, fuck it. It's I fine. pick it up. I pick him up and suck his dick. That's a caring mom. <laughs> I mean, that's what we're talking about. That's my, like, dirty joke from high school that I would always tell people. How do you get a dog to stop humping your leg? Pick it up and suck its dick. It's uh, actually a pretty, good, a pretty good joke. It's not bad, right? No. And then for kids, I go, um, why don't they have any gambling in Africa? Too Ooh, many uh, cheetahs. Ah, uh, good one. You're like, they're impoverished? <laughs> <laughs> I just found an old comedy CD of mine that oh I think God. I'm going to rewrite and redo. Ooh, I like that idea. Because I was listening the to it. premises are good, but you didn't get it, right? Yeah. But I think that's such a, like, it'll be a, a really cool thing to see how different I am as a writer or whatever. Right. You know? Yeah, that is cool. I'm pretty psyched to do it. Plus, um, it is an easy way to <laughs> come up with new material because <laughs> I'm fucking stumped in my house. Look at him. He's like a human. 
I yes. know he's so cute. I know because he's got the ball sack eyes. I'm telling you, don't scratch. I'm going to put your uh, cone on. No scratching, baby. What do you? I'm do not for- really mad at him. He's so cute. But I was scared with all this hair. Like I didn't know what was going on. Uh, Olivia. Okay, so the story I told the story already on the podcast. But when I, we first got him, we didn't mean to get like a puppy mill dog. We thought we were like getting a dog from like a Mexican family. And um, can you take him? Stop. Oh my God. He's grinning. He's cheesing because he's in a fucking magazine with Olivia Man. <laughs> so annoying. I mean, out of the two of you, he's the one who deserves to be in the magazine. I mean, it's just they're like, and this guy. <laughs> anyway, it's fine. It's no big deal. Could have launched my career. No, 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 no. It's good. I'm glad you chose to sit on the same side as her. <laughs> we went out last night. Olivia is so fucking funny, but she, it was like the last night of dining before they shut down restaurants again and she realized it and she so she ended up tipping everyone really fat and i promised i would tell everyone that she did that she left a 700 dollars tip that's nice i'm letting everyone know because she's like nobody ever puts mine <laughs> <laughs> i mean she was kidding yeah, but yeah. um i know i'm like you have to target a, like a young like a girl that you think has an instagram not like an older waiter that yeah. probably isn't on instagram yeah don't do it at canters yeah no you gotta go you gotta go big yeah but okay so um when we first got Randy, I was supposed to meet up with Olivia and little Esther to go on a walk. And so we were a little late, but we show up and we're like, oh, we got a puppy. And she is like an adopt, don't shop spokesperson. But I didn't really, I kind of knew that, but I wasn't really thinking about it. And I also was like, I don't really know the difference. I'm like, felt wow. like I was saving a dog. And um, I was explaining to her the situation. She goes, oh no, that's like the bad kind. Like that's like my whole organization is like against getting dogs that way. And I was like, oh, and she's like, but you have the dog now. Like we love him. He's cute. And it would have been weird if you left him there after knowing that, you know. And she's like, so I guess you rescued him. And she was being like very really cool about it. And then the next day, everywhere I looked, it's like billboards of her and her dogs. And it's like, adopt, don't shop, humane society. Like she's on park benches. I mean, it's, I brought, she was the third person to touch him after I got him. You know what you could do, Annie? What? No. Is you could lose it, turn it into the rescue place. Oh, that is a good idea. And then go rescue. What's you know what I mean? And that way you... Well, I think he's so ugly now that people will just assume he's rescued. And Yeah. And Olivia, last night, she goes, she goes, um, I don't want to be rude, but you do deserve this. She's like, you deserve this to happen. And she's like, I put a hex on you that you'll always be bald-eyed. I'm like, Alaya! <laughs> By the way, bald-eyed is better. I'm telling you, better. He, he looks better. He looks different. She's also saying, she's like, you, like, I haven't been on Instagram with him because I was, like, depressed and dealing with the emotions of sicky dog. But yeah. she, uh, but she was like, you know, it's like the fucked up looking dogs that get the most attention. I'm like, yeah. oh, it is true. It is true. It is true. I just was so cocky about how cute he was. Like, everyone was like, is he adopted? I'm like, no, he's cute. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm like, okay, yeah, he's adopted. But he's, I'm telling you, he's cuter now than he was before. Because yeah. he's different. You know how people, you know, it's like Uma Thurman. If you look at her objectively, you're like, that is a weird looking person. She but somehow, a little mangy, you know? Somehow together, it all works, you know? I know. And Ethan Hawke being married to her really brought her up for me, too. I don't know why. Did it really? I don't you know, know I like Ethan Hawke. Pretty, you know what really surprised me? I looked at Ethan Hawke's, the movies he's done, and I was expecting the, it to be a huge IMDb, just filled with huge movies. And I'm like, oh, he, his name is bigger than his resume yeah i mean because, cool. i mean because when you look at it big movies that he's done training day training day um reality bites yep. uh the purge um he was in but he's done mostly independent boyhood yeah what was the one with Uma Thurman? Is Ethan Hawke like? Is that what, is that your one of your dudes that you? No, think? no, no. no. Leaf Schreiber is my only dude, and then I just heard he's an asshole from yeah, an undisclosed. Well, I mean, listen, Leaf Schreiber. That's an interesting. I don't know why I've had a crush on him since 
Which I like brushes. it's what like what he was movie? always he was in like walking and t- while talking or so he was in like this independent movie I saw when I was younger and then he was just in stuff. And you like and, and what about the what he's in show that Showtime what's that? Yeah, and then as as Ray Donovan he was yeah. so hot. when he broke up with uh, Naomi Watts, which I may as well have had a fucking Google alerts on. I messaged my my agent. And I was like, can you get me like can you hook it up? Can you get me to a Ray Donovan party? I was like. All I need is to get to the party. But then I'm thinking about, like, I am not to date an actor. That's not for me. Can I tell you something funny, which I tried to do? So, Jessime Peluso. Oh, I'm just kidding. I love her so much. Jessime, one of my favorite people. And She's just, so fun. She's such a good hang. So, one of the Epic best. hang. So, you know, she's obsessed with Brad Pitt. Mm-hmm. And, um... I can't believe I'm going to say this out loud, but okay. So, so one night she was talking about, and she was down and talking about something about Brad Pitt. And I just sent her a number and I said, call him. She was what? I go, call him. That's his number. Call him. She was like, wait, cause she was like, if I could, I'd call Brad Pitt right now. It was on social media. <laughs> and I, and I just sent her, I sent her a number. I go, call him. She's like, what? I go, just don't tell him you got the number from me. I'll fuck <laughs> it up, but call him. And she was like, is this, it, it was my brother's phone number like <laughs> but so she still, thinks, she still thinks that she might have brad pitt's phone number she calls me and texts me every now and then like is this really his number because i want to oh call my him. god oh. well i was thinking maybe you would know it you could know him because that's what kelsey's friends with jennifer anison and they've been friends that long and so that's what she was like she was texting me she's like it's possible that you could have his number and i was like look we don't talk we're not buddies but there was a time when I was in running the same little area and I just happened to get his number. I've never used it. I said, but it's yours. Call him just so you can hear his voice. And she was like, I really want to do it. Wait, so she never did. She still will text me every now and then and be like, is that really his number? <laughs> but it's scary if it is to call. Yeah, it's not. What are you going to say? You're going to be like, um, I would be like, Joshua, give me your number. <laughs> <laughs> Just give it to everyone. I said you should just call just to hear his voice. Just call to hear yeah. his voice to make you feel better. But I don't think she ever did, which is a bummer. Well, but obviously I she didn't because your brother would have been like, "Who is Jesse May Peluso?" Motherfucker, yeah, it's a bummer. You know, I like doing little, little things like that. To little people. tricks. Yeah, why not? It's I get a little bit of guilt. Like I would love to be. I would love to have a prank show, or but I get like a little. I don't ever want to like hurt people. I, you know that feeling of like everyone knew and I didn't. Yeah. And everyone was looking at me that like, oh, Truman Show, like, oh my God. Or, you know. The difference is, okay, I loved Jackass because they right. all laughed with each other afterwards. Right. I hate the gotcha shows. That's what you're talking about. Where it almost yeah. feels dirty, like you're tricking this person. Unknown. Like, I don't like the Borats. I don't like that. I don't like, I don't like that. I read on it. Yeah, I know, but I don't like, for me, I don't like that guy. You know, that was my period blood. What? That was my period blood they used in the, I'm just kidding. (laughs) Can you imagine? (laughs) I was just pumping it out. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, they took my blood, you know, like Red Cross came and they, that's called Red Crotch. Red Crotch came and they took my blood and they donated it. Red Crotch. That would be, a, that's a funny they story. They donated blood. Yeah, and, that, and people want to know what I did on the movie, and that's what I did. Yeah, you just basically gave blood. I gave my menses. Oh, my God. What are you, by the way, are you cooking tomorrow? Are you? Uh, no, I am going to my friend's house, and they're cooking. I'm making turkey and lobster. Ooh! I'm coming. Yeah, what do you think? How far's the drive? I think you can make it. It's 30 hours. Oh, yeah, that's nothing. I mean, you could do it. Yeah, turkey, I think it's a little different. It's just a couple of us over here. So I was like, you know what? Let's make it a little different this year. Lobster, yeah. Yeah, dude. I love lobster. That's my, that lobster tail might be my all-time favorite. I like a nice steamed lobster. Full lobster, just butter. You don't need any extra anything. doesn't need to be stuffed. Nothing needs to happen. Stuffed? Who stuffs? People will like stuff a lobster. They'll throw some crab meat in or something. That's over. That's not. That's you know. It's like when people make put stuff on popcorn. Like butter's good. 
Or like when people- I know you're a stoner though. Wait, let's smoke weed. And I'm going to have, Todd, will you read the, oh my, he's literally still grinning and looking at his phone. I'm <laughs> just, by the way, no, I'm not even talking about this. My, oh. I'm going to need a new assistant. Does anybody need, does anybody want to work for me? Uh, you might have to start working for Todd. Todd's in Daily Mail. I'm not working for Todd. <laughs> this is disgusting. To. My dog made it in though. That's pre-mange or post-mange? It was yesterday. What about this one? What do you think about this one? That one's good. It's a little bit worn on the fingers. What do you have to Yeah, make? it is. It's not very consistent. Look, here's my dog. Let me see. Here's stupid, cover him. I don't want him getting any more airtime. It is so, I, I can't tell you how much I like the fact. It's so funny. And by the way, he looks like such a fucking, I'm about to get filmed. Like you don't know, he doesn't know, but it definitely may fall this off. <laughs> by the way, we also saw this girl in a car. We had the, it was a very fun, Olivia, let me just say, her name doesn't rhyme with fun for no reason. Yeah. <laughs> she is best. <laughs> I will tell you, I don't know her at all, but I've seen interviews and she just seems like she's way she's funnier than I thought she was. She was like a gamer is how she started. So she's is that right? Oh yeah, she was on that show. What was yeah, that? she's the best. She's really like, it's I'm very, Whitney has brought me some wonderful fucking people. Like the people I've met over quarantine that are so cool are like, um, Olivia, Amanda Cerny, like this was our like pod. Amanda Cerny, um, Jesse May was there one time, which was fun. Natasha Bedingfield. Um, it was just, she just has like an eclectic Kesha, like just this crew of people that are so fucking cool. She just um, like picked right. Who's your favorite out of all of them? Go ahead. If you had to pick one right now. I would say Olivia after last night. Yeah. Especially, it was quite... I love people who tip and over tip. It tells oh, yeah. you a lot about that. It tells you a lot. And it also the people who don't tip. I, well, it's weird. It's weird when you don't tip. Especially when you have money. Well, I sometimes it's annoying though, because when I opened for Louie, we went out to eat and he tipped the waiter more than he paid me for the spot. And I was like, <laughs> and it was like not a good meal. It was like <laughs> there were problems. He brought the wrong I'm like. But then I got a bonus. <laughs> I got a bonus after his special came out. But I, was like, <laughs> I was like, excuse me. I have Can to we, tell you, um, what's that? I have to tell you, I opened for both Chelsea and Cable Guy, both extraordinarily generous people. Like, like when so when I opened for other people, I was like, huh. Oh, it's hard. Well, Rob Schneider always pays me my headlining rate to open for him he always just like wants me to he just like we just have so much fun i fucking it's such a weird odd couple i love rob schneider so much it is a weird odd couple i fucking love him i met him on twitter like years ago and he was like come do yeah he's like i love your stuff he's like come do five minutes on my show it's just to have someone that like believes in you and is not trying to fuck you in this fucking business you're one of them he's one of them like you just remember it like where there's just you, nothing what if i told you no annie i'm just in it for the long game the I'm, whole time you and beth I'm are pl- trying to fing i'm playing the i'm playing the <laughs> <laughs> you never know with these swear couples honestly it could happen <laughs> oh once after a show i got the it was the because i never I hadn't toured like the Midwest. In the Midwest, they're all swingers. And I think it's because they get married so young. They're all swingers? Yes. They have like whole things where it's like certain rocks that they have outside their houses show each other that they're swingers. Wait. But when I did, yes. There's like, they're all swingers. They're all like, put your keys in the fucking. You know, in Pennsylvania, me, Lonnie Love, Natasha Legero, one other person. Might have been, I forget who the other person was. We did a gig as the comedians of Chelsea Lately. It was at a swingers resort. No, oh my God, that's perfect. No kids allowed. My room had a giant martini glass hot tub that you had to climb a a spiral staircase to get into. Oh my God, I'm so jealous. 
It was insane. The whole show, you were looking out at couples like, oh, everybody's going to fuck each other tonight. No, 100%. And it's, I'm not against it at all. Like, if people want to do that, that's, I'm like, cool. But I'm never, like, going to fuck a couple. Like, I have no interest in that. But I noticed when I started doing the, like, Sanfords and Sons and the, you know, like, any of those sort of, like... um, Great Glazer? Yeah, I miss R.I.P. I mean... He was so crazy. He was such a maniac. He, the first, within the first moment of me getting in his weird sports car that was, like, had a lot of phone books and weird things in it. His Lotus. His hoarder. Yeah, like his hoarder sports car. I get in. He's taking me to, it's, you know, it's like 5.30 in the morning or 6 to go do and he, radio. And you got to do 74 press outlets. Touches immediately, hand rubbing my knee, and I just slap. I went, boom! I went, no handsies on the kneesies. And then he never hit on me again. It was like the greatest line of my life. I went, no handsies on the kneesies. And he just... He's, oh my God. He, he said that Nikki, he would be like, he's like, I should have banged Nikki back when I'm like texting Nikki. I'm like, yeah, Craig Glazer's saying, he's like, she's like, is he still saying that shit? Like, he's like, I should have banged her back when I could before she- April blew Macy like, too. I'm like, you couldn't have been, they were, first of all, Nikki was like 14 when she started comedy. It's like, Nikki was like fresh out of college, like so cute, like do I, you think she was going to fuck you? Anyway, anyone that's not listening, Craig Glazer is, or anyone that is listening, sorry, and is not yeah. us, the two of us. Uh, Craig Glazer was one of the owners of Sanford and Sons, which was a comedy club in Kansas City, Kansas City, Missouri. And it was a shit show. The checks bounced. Everything was crazy. Annie. Craig like wrote a book. It was like a about being I, a gangster. All these things. I read that book. It was one of the best books. It was. He's called- the best. He kind of was the best. He was, here's the thing. You know those guys that are so terrible and so casually awful that you kind of like them? Like, yes. April Macy and I, our nickname for him was the casual racist. There was nobody more casually racist than the, he would just drop. He always had a black, like, aged out of stripping girlfriend, too, to Dude. kind of be like, I'm not racist. I have a black elderly stripper Danny, girlfriend. So he only <laughs> He only dated black women. His his wig was always crooked or sometimes he had it on backwards. Oh, he was amazing. And so there was this, okay, I got to tell you two good ones. First of all, the first time I ever meet him, I come straight from the airport to the club. I walk into the club with my bag and he goes, hey, Josh, come on in here. Let me talk to you in the office. I don't know why he sounds like Joe Diaz, but. But he does, but yeah. he does. So I walk into his office and there was a woman sitting across de- his desk and he sits down at his desk. And uh, I'm just standing there and he goes, I got to ask him, uh, do you fuck teenagers? And I said, what? And he goes, do you fuck teenagers? I go, no, dude, I don't fuck teenagers. And he goes, you don't fuck teenagers? And I go, do goes, you think all that- your colleagues do. <laughs> I go, yeah, I go, do you think that makes me the weird one? He goes, she's legal. I wouldn't do anything illegal. I go, no, no, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Like, no, I do not. Yes, that was the first up. thing he said to me. He was, you know why he went to jail, right? What was it again? I mean, he told me the story a million times. Okay. So he, or he was a, a criminal. And early on, he figured out a way to make some good money. He, he would set up drug buys. And so, and then he, part of his crew was the fake drug buyers. And part of his crew was fake FBI. Right. And so he, they would come in, take the money and the drugs and leave. And they were doing this whole thing. So the FBI came to him and said, hey, look, we want to bust you, but you're get, making drug deals with people we can't even get to. <laughs> so I'll tell you what, you come work for us and you won't go to oh, jail. that's right. But he couldn't, he double-crossed the FBI and that ended up going to jail. But his story is so crazy. Oh, you guys, he was so good. He has a book. I don't know what it is, but- King of Sting. What King of Sting? King of Sting. Two of his brothers died of heroin over all, de- uh, all I think all the brothers all, died. Yeah, all of his brothers died. The only one that's left is his his horrible father. His father was the worst of them all. Imagine you had a hundred sons and they all died before you. Dude. And Craig used to try to do stand up. Oh, like he, he was so annoying. And he would just be like <laughs> it would be like this awkward conversation he was having and just bombing. It's like, how many years have you been bombing like this? You didn't pick up any stage <laughs> skills, like you didn't pick up any sort of like crowd work. He like you never wrote one joke. 
He would, he would, he would tell the stories. He would go up there and tell the stories. And he would spend seven minutes giving away tickets to future shows. Yeah. And then he would spend about five minutes talking about what games he wanted to gamble on this weekend. And then he would be like, oh, all right, so let's bring your host up. He's like, what? Oh my God. The fuck. I know. Uh, and when I found out he died, I was genuinely sad because I wanted to go again. And my old agent was like, no, they're like, their they checks keep bouncing and stuff. And I was like, yeah, but I kind of just don't want to go. Like, I just like, yeah, he was so crazy. It was so entertaining. He would take me to Denny's. He's like, let's go to Denny's. I'm like, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, he was, I'm with you. Like, I think we have that in common where Guys like that, I know a lot of people are like, that's a good, bad dude. I want to hang out with him. I'm like, he's interesting. Yeah. Like, he, he, he keeps me entertained. I'm not going to invite him over to dinner. Yeah, but, he's never going to be around my very expensive things and my beautiful Yeah, home. I mean, clearly, whatever you're sitting on is... Oh, my God. Todd went outside. I think he's, like, calling people to tell him, tell them about the Olivia he, Month. He would tell his mom and dad to go... He's look. so excited. I mean, are you... Are you going to call Olivia and say in the future, I just want to make sure. I guess I just sit in the back seat now. <laughs> yeah. Unless you can get the paparazzi to take a picture head on like that. You know? Yeah. I'm or texting this person. If you guys drive, I think you're in good shape. I think that's the way to do it. <laughs> I mean, He's just, his grin is so funny. He's excited. Wouldn't you be? <laughs> he just got like blown up. <laughs> oh my god, it's so funny! I have to post it on Randy's Instagram. Randy is too funny. Yeah, Randy Jackson Quaid. I haven't posted on it since his eyeballs fell out, but I got him a lot of shades and stuff. But we have to. I have to bring him. I have to introduce him to the world as Chicken Man now. He looks He's so half chicken, half boy. Okay, cute. I believe you. I All believe right. you. It's Pretty just good. people used to stop and they'd be like, your puppy. Yeah. I told you the other day. Yeah, I told you that when I was walking my dog and this lady was like out eating and she was like, I pet him, but I'm sick. I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm sick. I'm feeling under the weather. I'm like, oh my God, get away from me, ma'am. Thanks for being out. Why are you out? That is yeah, but all the restaurants are closing tomorrow. What else? Like, what's going on with the comedy store? Comedy store shut down now. It was, it was, they were kind of able to do some stuff. And it yeah. was actually getting pretty fun, but they were just shutting. They were open under the, like, because they were selling food, so they were a restaurant. But they can't do things in the parking lot? I don't understand. No. Have you done that show up at the Magic Castle? I haven't done Tammy Joe's show yet. I'm supposed to do it soon, but. It's excellent. Oh, you liked it? Yeah, it was really good. I've had a lot of fun. Like when the comedy store was doing stuff out the window, my new stuff is good. It's good. It's like, I'm calm. I took this time off and I'm like. You know what's interesting is that, so I've done a couple weekends. When somebody asked me, how do you feel? I said, I'm so much more calm on stage. And I'm it's not better. Sure I'm yeah. And I see some of the people and not to be, I'm not trying to be shitty or anything, but I, you know, I did like a, uh, line up the other day at the comedy store before they had to stop doing it. And I see the people that go up every night that find a spot every night. And they were the people that we were all doing it together before every night, every night, every night, multiple sets. And the people that have maintained that when I went on, I was like engaging and like a person, you know, and then I, and I did well. And then I got off and they go on and they go like, all right, start, you know, like, okay, this joke, this joke, this joke, this joke, this joke. And audiences like aren't into it. Nobody well, wants to see you like round up and then shoot your thing. And then now here's the punchline and here's this and here's that. It was just like very, I just saw them losing interest and stuff. It's like, they want to see. You know, what's interesting is that I, I really, so especially in the last year or two, I've started to find perfection in the imperfection. Yes. So when I mess up a joke or something happens that isn't supposed to, or I forget something, or I slur, or I spit, or whatever the fuck happens. Oh my God, you're spitting? Uh, COVID? You have to. Oh my God. My new iPhone just got here. Let's see. Wait, why did, why did you order this over This does the not sound like an iPhone. Let's open it up. Let's do an unboxing. 
Let's, Let's do, do an unboxing. unboxing. This is very light to be an eye. What is this? Is this the I thing to take up. in? Oh, maybe they give me the phone. Oh, wow. Do I have to take my phone in first? I thought I was gonna get a fucking phone today. Hey, let me oh, this is what I'll open it with. My ninja oh, star. By the way, you know when Jacob was um, like seven years old, his school was doing Halloween, and I didn't send him to school as a ninja. I sent him to school as a ninju, and I gave. Oh, him that's a, so funny! I gave him a star of David and shit. Oh, that's great! Yeah, who didn't think it was funny? <laughs> Catholic school, they're like, "Ew, you're Jewish, get out!" <laughs> what is this shit? Hey, is that the Todd, the famous guy? Is he here? Asshole. I'm did so you, confused. Did you just get sent a bunch of this bills? This is the box for the, the, to return my device, but I don't have the device. I can't return it until they give it to me. Oh my God, I'm so annoyed. Uh, this unboxing sucks. This was a very disappointing. If you were on YouTube, you would not make any money unboxing. You unboxed paper. I was so excited. I I've was, been waiting all day. I got my new outfit. I'm still see. drinking my water. All right. All right these, these pants, okay. They're little yeah. swans. What's, the, what's that on the side? What's the logo? Oh, it's okay. aloe. Okay. I'm test driving it right now. And then all it's right. a sports bra. I put it on because you're married. I didn't want to be yep. titting out. My simps would enjoy it, but not my married friend. Yep. Um, but it's got, you know, cherry red sports bra. And then I also got same color leggings all right and you were excited to have the new outfit and the new and phone. my new fucking phone randy and so oh my god he's even when he's mad at the dog he's grinning has oh, he I'm so jealous has he yeah, did you tell your parents yet he already told his parents who else did you tell <laughs> your friends are back home are hey. you getting good responses uh-huh what do they say yo give her my number I get so many random people like hitting me up being like, can you like tell Olivia I'm on like famous you know, people that I'm friends with or comics or whatever, but, and they'll be like, can you look me up with Olivia? And I'm like, uh, no. I mean, or like if I hear from someone, I wish I could say who it was, but it's someone that I used to do comedy with in New York and I haven't talked to him in a while, but he's very famous now. But he, um, he asked a mutual friend, he goes, he wanted my number, so he didn't have my number. He lost my number. He did have my number at one point. But he goes, oh, can you give me Annie's number? And so my friend goes, hey, so-and-so wants to talk to you. Is that okay? And I go, it's Olivia Munn. I knew it. I go, sure. And then he goes, hey, do you think you could talk to Olivia Munn for me? <laughs> About what? Just like want me to, like, can I have her number or whatever? Listen, I'm going to tell every, every dude listening, you've got no shot. You I don't care. I don't know you. I'm just. I wouldn't even let you. I wouldn't even let you have her. No, no. You you can't take time away from you. By the way, obviously, I want to know about um, about Todd. Was he happy with his outfit in the picture? Yeah, Todd. How do you feel about your outfit in the picture and everything? Well, it's the jacket you got me. It's the jacket I bought him. Okay. As an assistant president. Cool Adidas shoes. And he's got cool Adidas shoes on. And I got Randy on my lap. Randy on his lap. So he's, he, people are, he's the mysterious dude. Like they're, who's that guy? They're like, who's he? And he's also Todd's Asian, half Asian and she is too. So they probably yeah. think they're related. Well, here's the deal. If you get in a magazine and you have a small dog on your lap, people assume you're famous. Yeah, it's really, I mean, for the, the fact that he's actually just my dog walker, who I yeah. allow to like sometimes sleep here. It's like. I think it's very brave of you to let an Asian person walk your little dog. I know they're really bad at walking dogs. <laughs> they're like, where am I? They're always walking into the walls and stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, it's uh, no, it's fine. I don't care. It's not a big deal. Well, I'm calling the paparazzi next time. Next time I'm with Olivia, I'm calling. You, sh I mean, I'm some... doing it. I'm going to tell her. I'm telling. I'm mark my words right now, guys. I'm the rat. It's what? me. And what? also, I'll tell you something else right now. I always push the, the Ouija board. That was me every time. I Put, always pushed it, and I always gave you what you wanted. What is, what's your paparazzi outfit? Tell me right now. Anything I own. Everything I have is so cute right now. You're ready. Your paparazzi ready. ready. I don't give a fuck what I look like. Get my name Yeah, your paparazzi there. ready. Yeah. Boop, boop, boop. I'm, you know, I'm having that experience of the Comedy Store documentary came out. That was very, I got very positive. 
um, remark. Like yeah. everything's been really positive and good. It doesn't translate, but I'm waiting. You mean to some money? Yeah. 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 It's funny how that works, right? Like I'm like, oh, great. All the greats in comedy now think I'm great. Awesome. Now, what how do they- I? <laughs> but you know what? I'll tell you something. I've told you this for years. There's nobody like you. And when there's nobody like somebody, it's just a matter of time. But there's nobody yeah. like you. So, you there's know? nobody like me. What if Todd becomes famous now? I'm really hoping for it, by the way. I don't... I'm not I am really, happy for Todd. You know, he's... I'm not rooting he's a against... a hard-working me. editor. I'm not rooting... You know, he's out there editing. He really needs to get his face in the fucking magazines. He's a fucking How famous editor. Well, how crazy would that be if somebody saw that picture and was like, he's, ha- you know what, let's give him a modeling. And he just got this <laughs> modeling so career. <laughs> and you were like, what the fuck? <laughs> oh my God, he passes me. They just give him, Judd Apatow's like, I want to do a project with this guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that happened in real time on this podcast. All right, we should read, we should answer some questions. Okay. Todd, do you want to, re- or it's not going to work for you to read them. If- okay. He's busy anyway. All right. Oh my God. I bet you are. Fucking embarrass me. He's about to post on his Instagram. All right. Okay. Questions. All right. How did your time living in Santa Fe directly affect where you are today, your life career? That is oh, my friend Dave Marshall from college. <laughs> that is for the solo, I feel like. Yeah, I'm definitely not from Santa Fe. Creamy or chunky peanut butter? Oh, wait, I have to end the other podcast. Wait, well, this is for Patreon. Okay. All right, guys, if you want to hear the rest of this stuff, and I know that wasn't a good question to go out on, and it's going to be better than... <laughs> tidies or briefs or yeah, boxers yeah. and yeah. do you like cats or dogs um join the patreon patreon.com slash annie letterman and you can watch all the extra bonus info say goodbye to josh everybody uh, 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 tell todd to go fuck himself everybody <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>